Ya. Here, so when they're making the presentation, if you find you have any questions, you can write it down. 
and we'll get to that. Can, we can dim one of the lights if you need it. tonight we are presenting a 42-unit project. 
as we walk through this presentation tonight, you will also see some of the things that they have done to try and address the comments that they were given. How was this outreach done, I think, is an important feature. Um, these folks actually knocked on doors. Um, that was the way that they tried to talk to their neighbors. They canvassed 173 households uh, within the 500-foot radius. They knocked on doors, they sat in living rooms, they met at kitchen tables to really try and understand what concerns, thoughts, comments their neighbors might have. In addition, they were aware that there was some opposition to this project and they reached out to those folks as well, trying to meet with them. The goal here was to try and present a holistic project that included the comments of all involved. Unfortunately, some of the opposition has not been open to meeting, but we do hope they're here this evening so that we can continue that dialogue. Um, in many cases, uh, we encountered folks who did not necessarily speak English for that reason. We translated all of their materials into Spanish, Vietnamese, and Vietnamese to try and outreach to those communities as well. So I think as you can see, um, they've really done some extensive outreach. And there were some folks who said they needed more information. We certainly hope they're here this evening. But there were many households who expressed support uh, of a residential project such as this, as this was designed. And we hope those folks are here as well. Tonight, we are seeking the support of the Neighborhood Council's Land Use Committee. Um, but this is a slide to kind of walk you through where we are in the process and how this is all going to function. At this point, we have filed an application with the city. Uh, we have to go through the Land Use Committee. We are here this evening. We have to go through your full board. And then we have a deputy advisory agency and hearing officer hearing, that's with the city. And then we move on to, it says here, city uh, area planning commission, but it actually should just be area planning commission. And then to the planning and land use management committee of the city council. And finally, this project will take a full vote for the city council to be approved. So as you can see, we are in the very early stages of this process. So as much as I tell you that they've had dialogue for going on over a year, I think you can see that the expectation is we're going to have much more dialogue on this project. So this really is the first step uh, in what is a formal process with the city. Um, all right, so this, as you see, is the proposed community plan. Uh, as I spoke to you about, there are a lot of things um, that they incorporated into this site to try and address comments they heard. But I think what's first to talk, what first is important to talk about is the fact that many things have been proposed on this site, and I know many of you have been involved with those. Um, people have looked at charter schools, people have looked at retail options, people have looked at multifamily options. We know there's been a multitude of conversations about what could be done on this site. The goal here was to try and provide what could be the least impactful and hopefully the most supported by this community. As you see, this is designed as a single family community. The lots range from 3,000 to 14,500 square feet. Uh, their average is 5,200 square feet, which is compatible with that of an R1 zone or a single family zone. Um, as you can see here, the parkway along Eastern will be improved. Um, as well, I'll get into this feature a little bit more, but this piece of land here that sits currently vacant and not taken care of will be taken care of with this project. Um, and we are looking at designing these homes, and Alan will get into this a little more detail, so that they are built into the natural terrain, so that we are doing as little grading as possible on a site that is quite difficult to build on from that perspective. Um, but as you can see also, there's an abundance of open space on this site. I think that's something that we found that was good for the community as well, good for the community we're building as well as good for the community surrounding. So um, and this is, these are backyards in the light green and then this here is all the surrounding open space on the site. detailed uh, view of the community plan. Um, one of the things that I spoke about just a moment ago is this landscape parcel right here at Eastern and Lombardi. Um, it would be a condition of this project to maintain and to beautify that area. Um, that's something obviously that is kind of a feature corner in the community and we feel like it would be important uh, to do that. One thing we discussed with the council office as well is the potential for 
you know, there are park funds that have to be, park fees that have to be paid as a part of this project. Looking at how to direct, make sure that those funds are actually directed to the nearby and adjacent parks for improvements there. Um, that is something they were willing to work with us on. So this pro this project or this community yes, that we're building uh, number, has a large focus 21, on the open the space cash and green that they're yeah, doing. She, um, this here, and it's hard to see with this lighting, this red line here denotes the walnut grove that will be maintained on the site. Um, so that is, as you see, this very large feature right here on the project so that when you're driving by, the biggest thing you see here is, are those walnut trees. Um, another feature here is that they have decided uh, to create, I don't wanna say decided because <laughs> they're working with the city to uh, create a cistern that will capture all the rainwater uh, so that they can irrigate landscaping from that. Um, so that is an important feature to them as well. Um, one of the issues that came up in some of the meetings we had with the community was the traffic issue and concerns about speeds. Right here, we've been talking to LAPD, to the council office, the DOT, Bureau of Engineering, about what could we do to help address this. And one of the things we've talked about is putting in one of those speed notification signs. So it's a sign that you're all familiar with as you drive by. It lights up the speed that you're driving. Um, it's been a good way that we actually heard from LAPD about this to deter uh, speeding on streets. So we looked at something potentially around here uh, to see if we could assist with doing something there to slow the traffic down. Um, in addition, I think this driveway here, as you see, um, the intent is to flare. We uh, agreed that we would widen this driveway. This was also a conversation that went on with LAPD and DOT and the council office. Um, to make sure that people had an easier way in and out of that driveway. Uh, the intent would be that we had right turn exits out of this driveway, only actually right turn exits out of all of our exits in the community. Uh, we'd even be willing to look at if there was a way to, you know, you can put in those lamp, uh, pork chop kind of uh, medians so that you're uh, guaranteeing that, that right turn. Um, in addition, the homes over here on Lombardi, rather than having five exits and cars backing up onto Lombardi directly, because that was a comment that we heard was a concern as well. We created one entrance here so that folks are coming off of Lombardi and then they're on a protected street so that when they're backing up their cars out of the driveway, they're not backing up into traffic. We also have added many trails throughout the community, as you see here and again over here and down here, to try and connect it, to try and make it more walkable, more pedestrian friendly. Um, there's also one concern that came up repeatedly was guest parking. Uh, was did we truly have enough. Uh, in the site, you'll see there are different pockets, such as down here, and then you've got one over here, uh, and some other places in the community where we are providing additional guest parking. Uh, the city requires a quarter of guest parking uh, per unit. We're providing 18 spaces, which is actually in excess of what the city requires by 55%. So um, we are focused on that as something that was important to this community. These garages will fit two full-size vehicles, which is much more than what the city requires. Um, you can do standard and compact, which you know doesn't actually fit some of the cars that folks drive. Um, all of these slopes and all of these common spaces are going to be maintained by a maintenance association on the site. Um, this, if you're familiar, is it's much like a homeowners association for this entire overarching organization and community, and it will help maintain, make sure that it continues to look nice as the years go on, um, so that you're not seeing, you know, one homeowner maybe particularly taking good care of their site, whereas another one might not be so much. Um, in addition, as you know, this is a, uh, a uh, small lot development, and a lot of times when you see small lot, you can get down to as little as six inches between homes. This project is designed to look and feel like a single family home development. So you see much greater spaces uh, between these homes so that they do act much more like single family homes. And finally, um, we really looked at this issue of setbacks. You know, we had comments here that originally had homes right up against here and folks were concerned about <coughs> that feature. Um, so we've looked at moving these homes further in so that we have much greater setbacks. We've got over 30 feet set back to property lines and over 65 from neighboring homes. Um, in addition with extensive landscaping provided on the site. 
So as you can see, they've spent a great deal of time trying to address some of the concerns that came out of this community. And I hope we'll uh, work with you tonight and hear a little bit more feedback. I'm now going to hand it over to Alan to walk us through some of the architecture and design. Thank you. Again, my name is Alan Scales with KTGY. Happy to be here tonight to present uh, all of our hard work and coordination with city uh, staff, council, etc. Um, what I'd like to show you here tonight is to start really where we, we begin the design process and looking at the context. And so this diagram is pulling away from our site a little bit and showing you so that this is our site. We've got just for orientation standpoint, Eastern Lombardi. It starts to show you the context of the neighborhoods around um, and directly um, adjacent to our proposed site. Real simply stated, we're, we're looking at really a ground figure, land use, uh, building footprint size relative to lot size. And so as you look at the comparison of what we're proposing, we've pulled apart some of the trees and some of the you know, additional graphics just to show you where our houses would be proposed. Those are the more colorful um, diagrammatic items on the site plan, and then clearly the green space and the drives and so forth. Uh, so just simply looking at that diagram, you can see how that relates to the, the existing context and the built environment around us. So I think we're quite in line with that. In fact, if you look at just the, the basic numbers, we're a little over 50% open space on the site. So it was always our concern to provide a solution that didn't maximize the, the hillside with uh, building. We were really uh, interested in creating edges that were soft that retained the natural qualities of, of the terrain and, and the, the site itself. Uh, furthermore, the plans that we're proposing, we have four plan types on site, and that's really where the color coding comes into play here. Uh, so we're, we're offering a variety of uh, homes, uh, different floor plan styles, two-story, three-story stepping with the grade, and all these homes are intended to work with the natural topography of the site itself. So stepping up the hillside, not, not straight up and down. So we've got, we've got that integrated design where the foundation of the home includes retaining rather than retaining being out at the edge of the property or building it into the home itself. Uh, it should be noted that in, in design of this, the site plan itself, we've created two points of access. One off of Eastern, one off of Lombardi. As was mentioned earlier, five homes each off Lombardi, one point of access to the public street. Um, we designed this as effectively three different terraced villages. So we've got a lower village, we've got a middle terrace, and we've got an upper terrace. On the eastern side, we have a point of access through here that will connect you to both the upper village and the middle village. We'll go ahead and move on. In terms of the architecture, what we're looking to do is really look for some inspiration in the work of an architect by the name of Irving Gill. There's some historic precedent to Southern California architecture. Um, you know, really a transitional style of architecture that takes a little bit of a progressive look and ties it into a traditional um, set of building materials. What we're really looking for here uh, mostly is articulation of the facade, moving that architecture so they're not simple planes. They're, they're moving in and out. You've got relief in the massing, whether it's recesses up the entry doors, step back at the second floor, and articulation in, in terms of detail uh, with awnings, corbels, um, obviously a use in a variety of colors. Uh, this uh, rendering here shows an example of our two-story homes. These two-story homes um, also feature a, a roof deck option. That would be a buyer option. And you can see that through the guardrails on the top on those roofs. We've pulled those roof decks into the building footprint so they're not at the edge. They're pulled away from the edge. The stairway housing that leads up to them is the only thing that would be leading up to that roof deck level. Otherwise, it's a guardrail. And again, there's careful layout of that roof deck pull away from that edge to maintain privacy to existing and, and neighboring properties. 
Yeah, this this is an example of two two of the uh, two story houses. In one case, we have a front entry adjacent to a garage door. In another case, we have a side entry that come around to the side. The side entries are really at the ends of blocks. So that gives us a different layout, a different point of entry. It articulates the facade. So you're really getting a front, both on a side and, and a front. So you're getting a you know, four-sided architectural response with material and detail the same on all sides. This is an example, or a bird's eye view, coming from Eastern and Lombardi, here at the corner. Oh, sure. Thank you. So these are, these are the five homes that would be uh, located off of Lombardi. We have ample landscaping that would, are you going to be able to see that? So we have ample landscaping in the parkway, separating the parkway from our private drive, and of course in front of each of these homes. Uh, this is an example of a home that's stepping up into the hillside. So you can see we have a two-story edge at the front, but as the hillside slopes up, and as you can see, the hillside sloping up to our top terrace, there's quite a bit of grade that moves all the way up to the top of the hillside. This home is integrated into that hillside, so you're getting a two-story edge. From this side, as you get to the private rear yards, you have a two-story edge from that upper portion of the, the uh, hillside. So in fact, the way these homes live, main living is on the second floor, and that opens up directly to a backyard that's effectively 10 feet above your garage. And again, that's just working with the natural terrain of, of the grade. So that, that natural terrain allows us to step those houses into the, the hillside itself. At the top, we also have an example, and we'll go on to another slide of what we're calling our downhill, our downslope homes. These homes actually enter in the middle and step down to uh, living spaces and uh, bedrooms uh, up above. In, in all cases, the architecture is stepping up the hill, so you can see it uh, pushing back as it goes up the hillside. And again, the, the intent here is to create variety in, in the architectural theme, different colors, different materials, um, a little bit of different movement in how the entries are, are uh, played out, whether it's a colorful siding or a more uh, earth tone rich uh, color scheme. To the next. And finally, this is a view from Lombardi, excuse me, Eastern, as you come into our project's main vehicular entry, we have four homes that front, front uh, Lombardi. So this is an example of what we're calling a downhill house. It's a little bit closer view of that. But we have the place of East Eastern, I, four homes. I, 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 Eastern, sorry. But, uh, this is an example of our downhill home, where we will have entries actually on the second level as you come in. Again, all private garages are internal, they're not facing the public street. So that as you move into the property, you would get into the front doors on the upper level and move down to uh, bedrooms, living space in the middle, and additional bedrooms on the top. Again, you know, the idea is that these homes are stepping into the hillside, integrated into the slope of the natural train of, the, um, of the, the hillside itself. And, and, you know, same, same concept here in terms of articulation of the facade, movement and, and plane changes and, and articulation with siding and, and stucco and, and a variety of colors. Well, as was mentioned earlier, we have met with the city urban design studio. Simon Pastucha um, is a part of that process, has taken the time to sit down with us and review the architecture, have lots of uh, positive things to say in regards to placement of the home and, and the articulation of the facades and, and so forth. So we've, we've, at this point, received pretty good uh, comments from the city regarding the architecture. We're certainly happy to hear uh, what your thoughts might be. Is that, the, is that your intention? Do you want to add anything? No. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Because that was exactly 20 minutes. I could give you guys a few more minutes if you want, but I do want to call out uh, Officer Camacho to address some of the safety <coughs> issues and the traffic issues that have been brought to our attention at the prior meetings. 
So you guys are all done. We're all done. Okay. Does everybody know Officer Camacho? What, what's the questions after? Uh, hello everyone, I'm Officer uh, Gus Camacho, I'm the new senior league officer for the El Sereno and University of Hills area. Took uh, responsibility, I guess, for that area back in uh, mid-April. So I'm here to field any questions uh, regarding uh, traffic or maybe safety in regards to this project. Also have uh, Officer uh, uh, Cassini here. He's been senior lead officer in Hollenbeck for about 20 years now. And uh, he has some real personal experience as far as uh, you know, growing up in the community and all that. So you know, he's, he's also a stakeholder. Um, so, so will you be here questions? to address questions? Or I'm here to address gonna... questions. Okay, yeah. you have nothing to, nothing on Well, happen. I think they've been brought up as far as some of the, one of the questions regarding like Eastern Avenue, regarding speed. That's one of the, the concerns on there. Uh, and speaking to our um, main uh, traffic officers, that does traffic enforcement. Um, unfortunately, Eastern Avenue, which is one of those locations where speed has always been an issue, he tells me that currently they don't have what they call a survey completed from the Department of Transportation. And it does take some time before that survey gets done. And it does last for several years, but currently it's expired. So he, as a motor officer, maybe trying to enforce traffic using a uh, laser, can't do it. Because if you just work for it, um, it, it will get thrown out, you know. Uh, so one of the things we talked about, and also in speaking with the officer, is that those speed feedback signs are, they do work. They are a deterrent to a lot of drivers. I mean, they don't, I'm not saying they're 100% effective, but they, they do work as far as getting people to slow down. You know, uh, I know there's one on Huntington Drive, not too far from the school. They're uh, uh, at uh, El Sereno Middle School. I'm sorry, not El Sereno Middle School. Uh, Huntington Drive. Uh, uh, elementary. Elementary, I'm sorry, yes. Um, and uh, those do work. I know I see it all the time. And I make sure that I'm abiding by the speed limit too, you know, and when I slow down, I'm sure the car behind me slow down. You know? So but I know those, those, those do work. And that's you know, I know this thing called black and white fever, but <laughs> I watch my speed is what I'm saying, unless I'm going to a call for service, right? I get there as fast as I can. I just want to add to it, uh, on, in, in speaking with the developers early in the stage, you know, uh, for us it's public safety, that's the number one, and how it's gonna impact community, the park, the children, and stuff like that. And, and meeting with them, you know, the, the first thing on, on Lancaster, the